unless your pool's heated and you swim all year round, most pool owners will need to get their pool ready for swimming at the start of the season. Today we're going to run you through a simple checklist and give you some helpful tips that'll get you started. The most important thing to remember when it comes to your backyard swimming pool is safety. Most of these safety points will revolve around the gate and fence. Firstly, most importantly, make sure that the gate is never propped open. Secondly, it's very important to make sure that the gate self-closes. So we check this in three stages. We start by opening the gate all the way up. <coughs> then again about halfway. And then just a few centimetres. Luckily for us, this works perfectly. It's also important to remember that over the winter, you might not notice it, but the fence can build up with a bit of rust at the base due to the chemical splash out from the pool. So it's important just to go through the whole fence and give it a good shake, make sure that it's nice and sturdy. It's also important to have a current resuscitation chart right next to the pool in full view. And lastly, we want to make sure there's no poolside furnishings, chairs, tables, anything like that, that might enable a child to jump over the fence or open the gate themselves. Unfortunately, the last few years, there's been a few incidents of children getting into pool areas and drowning. So we want to make sure that all those sort of things are clear and well away from the pool fence. Let's go have a look at the next tip. Next, we're going to talk about the water level. It's important to maintain the right water level for two reasons. If the water's too high, then you don't get the skimming effect when the pump's on. And if it's too low, then the pumps will start to suck air and you can do damage to them. I would recommend you keep the water level about two thirds of the way up at the entry point here. That way you allow a little bit of space for rain and you also allow a little bit for evaporation. Next, we'll empty the basket. When you're taking the skimmer basket out, it's important to realise that every skimmer box is different. Some baskets will have a locking mechanism and some will just pull straight out. Take a few minutes to have a look at yours Get it right, then pull it out. You want to try and keep all the leaves in the basket. If any get on the other outside of the basket, they will go through into your pump. Simply tap it clean on the side, take all the leaves out. When you put it back in, the way you came out. Unfortunately, it's not uncommon after winter to have a bit of an algae problem. There's not too many ways to resolve this other than a bit of old fashioned exercise with the brush and some advice from your local pool professional. I recommend you take a sample of water up to your local pool shop and get them to test it for you and they in turn will recommend the right algicide to solve the problem. The most common type of filtration these days is a sand filter. Most people like these because they're low maintenance, don't require too much work. However, every four weeks or so you do need to backwash your filter. It's a very simple process. One rule to remember in particular is that every time you move the backwash handle, the pump has got to be turned off. First thing we do, as I said, turn the pump off, push the handle down, spin it from filter all the way around the backwash, and we turn it back on. Now in backwash, we want to let the filter run for about 90 seconds. You have a sight glass here, and what will happen during that 90 seconds is this will go dirty with the dirty water shooting out to the sewer, and then it will clear up. Like I said, generally 90 seconds. It can take a little bit longer if the filter's particularly dirty or less if it's not dirty at all. After the backwash is finished, we turn the pump off, push the handle down, spin it around to rinse, and we turn it back on. What's, what rinse is doing is it's shooting all the dirty water that's just in suspension floating around in the pipes and it's shooting it out to the sewer. This generally takes between 20 and 30 seconds. Once the rinse is finished, we turn the pump off again, push the handle down and finish back off on filter. We turn the pump back on and the backwash is finished. Becoming more and more popular these days are cartridge filters. There are two main reasons for this. They're very efficient and they use a lot less water, so they're better for the environment. They're simple to clean and should probably be done about every four weeks or so. Just take the lid off, pull the element out, hose it down, hosing down takes about five minutes, make sure it's clean and when you finish pop it back in. The manufacturers would recommend that every six months or so you soak the element in a cartridge degreaser that you can buy from any pool shop. 
and then hose it down after that. When you're putting the lid back on, make sure you do it up nice and tight. You shouldn't have to use any tools, just hand tight should be fine. Turn it on and make sure there's no leaks and you're done. Next thing we're looking at is the salt chlorinator. From time to time you can get calcium deposits built on the salt chlorinator and they need to be cleaned out. Andrew's going to look at that in segment four for you and show you how to deal with those sort of issues. In terms of filtration running time, in the peak of summer you really need to be running the pool a minimum of eight hours a day. It's a good idea to break the times up, maybe four hours in the morning, four hours in the evening, and it's best to have it running when there's no direct sunlight shining on the pool. If, however, you do have a solar booster system, you may need to run the chlorinator and filter a little bit longer, possibly 10 or 12 hours a day. But you're going to have to speak to your local pool professional to see what best suits your pool. You'll need to check with your pool professional to see how much chlorine you need in the pool, and that will then reflect on how long you have to run the filter for. After running your pump for 10 minutes or so, that'd be the right time to take a sample of water for water testing. What you need to do is take the sample from about 30 centimetres below the top of the pool level. Turn the bottle upside down, down about 30 centimetres, and back up again. Now, it's important when you're taking a sample that you use a clean bottle or jar. If you use an old soft drink bottle, the acids in that bottle can affect the readings. We at Zodiac recommend you take a water sample up to your local pool shop where they can test it for you. They'll test it properly and then tell you what to add. Let's go to segment two now where we'll analyse pool testing in a little bit more depth. <laughs> 